Hey guys, in today's video, we are gonna tackle the second part of sewing the culotte jumpsuit. So we'll work on sewing the leg portion and then connecting that to the bodice. Now we're gonna finish off the bodice by um, working on the topic of sewing corners. So this will address the back opening and how to have a very clean, nice point at that center back top section of the bodice. Now the rest of this pattern doesn't really address curves and corners. So this one, we're just gonna work through the concepts and the techniques that you need to know and understand for sewing this particular pattern. All right, let's jump in. Now we're gonna take a look at sewing the leg portion of the culotte jumpsuit. So we're gonna take the bodice and set it aside. And I have view A cut out here, this is the culotte length. And then I have the pocket facing and the front pocket. Now I'm just gonna mention again quickly, you wanna make sure that you add some sort of marking for this dot on the pattern piece and I've added a notch right here so that I know where that dot is along that seam line. And then on this front pattern piece itself, you're just gonna to wanna to make some markings for this pleat. So I've gone ahead and just slit right into my seam allowance. I've cut two small slits right here so that I know where those two lines are marked. You could also notch out from your seam allowance. I've gone ahead and set this back piece aside and I've spread apart all of my cut pieces for the front leg, the pocket, and the pocket facing. So we have two sets. I'm gonna set this aside for now and we're just gonna work on one. So we have the front leg and the pocket facing right side up and then this is the pocket. So for this part, we're just going to simply set these right sides together and then sew this seam allowance right here, quarter inch stitching line. And here we have that stitched. Now this seam has a slight curve. We're gonna go ahead and just trim this down to about an eighth of an inch. And if you had a thicker fabric, you could trim these down a little bit um, separate from each other so that they're a little bit different lengths so that when they're folded under to the right side, you have a little bit of grading that happens and you don't have a lump right there under that seam allowance. This fabric is pretty thin, so I've just gone ahead and trimmed these together. Then down at the base of this curve, I'm just gonna cut in a few little slits right up to that stitching line, just down in here so that it lays flat when we flip this over. So we're gonna flip this over to the right side, wrong sides together, and you can just gently finger roll that so that you have this seam line come all the way out. And then we'll press this to have this regain the shape of the cut pattern piece. Now, once you have this pressed, on the wrong side, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you have that seam pressed exactly as it's sewn and that your top raw edges line up. So the top of the pocket facing will line up with the top of this leg front and then on the side as well. And you're just gonna to want to carefully top stitch right along this pocket seam line. Now you're gonna take this front pocket piece and that is gonna line up exactly with this cut curve line. So your pocket facing and your pocket will line up on this interior edge. And you're just gonna go ahead and stitch those together. We're gonna straight stitch and then we're gonna zigzag to finish this off. If you're sewing with a serger, you can have all these edges serged ahead of time or cut, cut and stitch with your serger at the same time when you sew this seam. You just wanna make sure that you have your front leg out of the way when you sew it. And then once you're done, it comes back underneath. And here we have that stitched pocket. So it has been straight stitched and zigzagged to cover the raw edge around the curve. And now you can see how that lays back behind here. So we have the pocket situated behind the leg front, and then we're just gonna go ahead and baste these three layers together at the top, and then baste these three layers right here at the side. Then I've also gone ahead, since I was zigzagging this to begin with at the pocket, I've gone ahead and finished all the raw edges of the front and the back legs. So I have those all finished and ready to go. And again, you could do this with your serger um, or your standard sewing machine. Then you're gonna go ahead and just repeat that front pocket for the other leg front. Now we're gonna take the leg front and the leg back and we're gonna sew them together at the side seam. And to do this, you simply just line up the side seam, right sides together, and we are going to pin and sew this seam line. 
And here you can see that stitch seam line. So we're just gonna open that up and we're gonna press the seam allowance for both the front and the back towards the back of the leg. And this will help the pocket itself to lay flatter than if we pressed the seam allowance open where it would push all that pocket back out to the front. It just is a little bit bulkier. So for this, we press the seam allowance towards the back. And here on the opposite leg, we've already done that. It's pressed towards the back and it lays nice and flat. This is our front pocket. Now for this next step, we're gonna pre-press our hemline while the pant leg is flat. I'm gonna take this over and I'm gonna press it twice at a quarter of an inch. And once we have that press, I'm gonna pull it back open, but I have these pre-creased lines, which makes it much easier to hem in the round once I have the inner leg seam sewn. But for this next step, I'm gonna unfold that and then I'm going to line up the inseam. So this is the top of the leg and we have the inseam right here. So we're just gonna line up this entire inseam from crotch to hemline. I'm just going to pin and straight stitch at a quarter inch along this line. Then I'm just going to go in and press this inner leg seam open and then along the base of the leg where we have that hem pressed, it makes it very easy to simply roll that hem right along those pre-pressed lines. And then we'll just go ahead and pin this hem all the way around. Now we have this pinned all the way around. This is a fairly wide leg opening, so this is pretty easy to run around your presser foot, but we're going to feed this around our presser foot just like this so that we can watch our top stitching from the top side of the fabric. Then you're gonna go ahead and repeat that hemline for the other leg. And now we have both leg fronts. We have one turned inside out and one right side out. They are both front up. So we have the front of the leg here and then I have the front of the leg here and here is that front pocket. So I'm going to take the one that is right side out and I'm simply going to insert it into the one that is inside out. And this is a traditional um, pants assembly for a, like a person's pair of pants where you'd sew the inseam first and then you do the crotch seam at the end. So we're going to take this and simply feed it inside matching up our pockets on this side and then our crotch seam will line up on this side. So right here I have my inseam and then on the other inside I have the inseam. So we'll start here and we'll pin that so that the inseam lines up. Then I'm going to look at my center back opening where I had my notched area that lines up with the dot marking on the pattern and I know I only wanna sew up to that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pin it right here and then I'll work my way and pin all the way along center front. Now I have this seam ready to sew and I'm simply going to set this under my presser foot and just sew right along this entire seam line. So when you get to that center um, inseam part, you just wanna make sure that you have that seam allowance pressed open and you're being careful to keep all of this fabric smooth. You don't have any wrinkles or puckers that get caught in your seam line. And I have my needle in the down position so I can continue to rotate that as I need to. So here you see that seam line sewn and we stopped at our notch. Now we are going to pull these legs apart, turning it right side out. So you can see here we have two legs and this is the front. The front is sewn all the way to the top. These are the two pockets and this is that center back opening. So now I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to press this seam open all the way around to the back. And then I'm going to continue to press just to mark this seam line, the seam allowance marking line, all the way up to the waistline. Now we're gonna go ahead and work on this front pleat. And to make this a little bit easier, I've marked the little slits that I cut into the top of my pattern of my fabric um, with a red pin and a white pin. So you can see that right here, they line up with these solid lines. And then this right here lines up with my stitched 
pocket seam line. So for this next step, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that my pocket little part itself is a little bit out of the way so that it doesn't get folded into my pleat. My pleat is simply going to fold on top of the pocket. So I'm gonna take the red pin, that is gonna be my fold line, and I'm gonna fold that back so that it lines up exactly on top of the white pin. And this right here is going to be my pleat, and you can see the pocket is back here underneath it. So I have a folded pleat. Now I'm just going to pull this red pin out and repin this through all layers and it is secured down. So I'll go back and press this. I'm gonna pull out this white one too, just to make sure that I have that pinned right along my fold. So this is my pleat right here. It's now there. I'm going to press this and then baste a few stitches across the top just to secure that before I attach this to the waistband. And then we're gonna repeat that on the opposite side, folding the pleat back towards that pocket. So the pleat on each side will kind of point in an opposite direction. And here we have both pleats and the center front is right here. And I went ahead and just basted all the way across covering both pleat lines and my center front, and that actually helps hold this center front seam open. Now along each back portion, we're gonna sew gathering stitches just along from side um, to a little bit in front of center back. So we're gonna do that on both the left and the right side so that we can gather this slightly in the back to fit the waistband. Now we're gonna bring the bodice back over. I have center front marked on the waistband with this red pin so that it's easy for you to see. I'm gonna line that up with my center front seam line, right sides together, and then I'm going to look at these princess seams in my bodice, which are right here on either side of center front, and I'm gonna line those up with this pleat from the lower portion. Now this is gonna become a lot more obvious in a solid color, um, fabric like the chambray or something that you've done top stitching on. On a print like this it's less obvious but you still want to be as careful as you can to make sure that you have those seam lines continuing um, throughout the waistband. So the waistband will be solid but that seam line should line up and continue on the bottom portion of the jumpsuit. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to line this up center front right here and I'll just pin that Then I'm gonna look at my princess seam and my pleat, and I'm gonna line that up. And then same on the other side, I have my pleat right here and my princess seam. And then your side seam of the bodice is gonna line up with the side seam of the leg and you wanna make sure that your side seam on the leg is still pressed to the back when you pin those together. And then at the back portion, you're gonna notice that you have a few inches of the waistband and then a longer portion of the jumpsuit here that's gonna to need to be gathered to fit. So you can pin center backs together Notice that this does not line up until you simply pull the threads and gather it to fit. So you'll just work on that. You want to make sure that you have this spread evenly up from the side seam. So you can work those gathers evenly and then just pin that to the waistband and then repeat that on the opposite side. Okay, so we have this ready to sew. I brought it over to the machine. I'm going to sew all the way around this waistband seam. So I'm beginning at center back. And here we have this waistband seam completed. So I've gone ahead and trimmed off my seam allowance for this bottom seam, 
Both seam allowances on the waistband are pressed in towards the center. This is the bodice, this is the leg. So we have those pressed in so that the seam allowance, I mean, so that the waistband lays nice and flat and the seam allowances are pressed in towards center. Now, if you're gonna top stitch this waistband, you're gonna wanna have the jumpsuit turned inside out. And then that way you can run this through the machine with this right side up and you can very clearly see where you're doing your top stitching and then you can have very consistent lines because you're gonna wanna have your top stitch lines be equally spaced apart along this whole entire waistband. All right, now we're at the final steps. We're gonna finish the back opening of the jumpsuit and do the finishing steps on the straps. So to finish the back opening, you're gonna to want to determine if you're gonna do snaps or if you're gonna use hook and loop tape. If you're gonna do snaps, you are going to finish both sides of center back with a 1 8 inch seam allowance simply by putting right sides together, keeping the waistband pressed up on this lining piece at the base, pin and then straight stitch a 1 8 inch seam on each side. If you're going to finish the center back opening with hook and loop tape, you want to allow for a little bit larger overlap. So to do that, we are going to finish one side of center back by putting right sides together and sewing this at a quarter inch seam allowance with the waistband pieces lined up and that base part of the waistband folded up at the bottom uh, before you sew. So you'll sew it with that folded up quarter inch on one side and then we will trim and finish the back. So for this one, I'm gonna show you finishing it with hook and loop tape because it will address both issues. So here we have this quarter inch seam allowance sewn down on one side of center back. Now, if you know what you're doing at the beginning, you're gonna sew with hook and loop tape, you can sew this seam on your bodice um, all at one time, turning this corner with the needle in the down position. We sewed our bodice with the lining before attaching the legs for the video, so we have done this at the end um, as a separate seam. Now once you have this seam sewn, you're just gonna want to carefully trim your corner. So to do that, we're just gonna come in as close as we can to that stitching line. and angle that outward so that we have very little bulk at the corner and we can continue to trim that seam allowance down a little bit more, about an eighth of an inch. Then I also have a point turning tool so when we turn this right side out we can take this and put it right into the corner and work our way to get a nice clean point. And you can use a technique, this is very thin fabric, so this looks okay as it is. We can finger press it, press it with the iron. You can come back in and work your way to really get that to come all the way out. And there you go, you get the top of the corner right there. Now the technique we showed you in the heavyweight fabrics, we can use a pair of pliers and a piece of fabric to cover this and you can press that and crimp it with the pliers that will help to reduce any bulk that you have in your corner as well. So this will be the finished side for the part of the back that's gonna do the overlap on the outside. Then you can see on the inside here, this seam line continues with the center back opening for the leg portion. It causes that to fold under a quarter of an inch. And then this waistband piece, because we folded that up when we stitched it, is already folded under. So when we come along in here to tack this down uh, with our hand stitching, it will line up and fold under just on top of that seam line from the inside of that waistband. Now on the opposite side, when we are doing this with hook and loop tape, we're simply going to line these seams up, wrong sides together, and we're gonna do the same thing, make sure that our waistband seam allowance is folded under for the lining right there. And then we will simply stitch this together, finish this edge, either just by serging it 
or by covering this with a zigzag stitch, but your hook and loop tape is going to come right over and kind of line up with this raw edge. So we leave this open and then that way we have a little bit more room for the overlap on the closure and this can come over and overlap a full quarter inch. So there we have that. I've simply just zigzagged those two um, sides together with wrong sides together. We have our piece of hook and loop tape that is the length of the back opening to the bottom of the waistband and this is a half inch wide. I am simply going to cut this in half so that I have two quarter inch strips and this has a soft side and a rough side. So once I cut it in half, I have both pieces that I need to finish this back opening. So on the finished side, I'm gonna sew it so that I have the soft side facing up and I will just come around and stitch on all four sides. And then on the opposite side, I'm gonna sew it on the right side of the opening with the rough side, and you can hear that right there, that is the rough side, I'm gonna line that right up with the edge. I'm gonna stitch around all four sides, and then I have the rough side on this side and the soft side on the other side so they can overlap. All right, now to finish this last step, we are gonna determine the strap length that works for the dolls that we have. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, the stuffing on the body of the dolls can vary a lot. So I find that it's good to test this the first time on the dolls that you have or that you're sewing for most frequently and determine the strap length right here that fits the best for that doll. And I like to have, with most of my designs, the straps lay on top of this arm join, if that's what you wanna call that, right there where the cloth meets the plastic arm. So we have the strap laying right, right along the top of this, and then it will tuck right into this back portion opening right here. So I'm just gonna feed that in. So I'm just gonna work to feed that into that opening in the back, see the measurement that I like, and then I'll pin it. And I have this um, open in the bottom right here so that I can easily grab that from the inside. We haven't sewn this lining on the inside yet at this point. You can also do this strap measurement before you finish the back opening entirely. Uh, determine your strap length and then we'll set this in and top stitch here before sewing this back portion and your lining is free it makes it a little bit easier. So once I have that fat in and I like the length and how that fits I'm just going to pin this right here. So if I measure this and I want to save this for next time I'm just going to measure right over the top. I have the beginning right here at this seam line. I'm measuring over the top. I'm coming right here and it looks like I have three and five eighths for my exposed strap length. So I'll just mark that and then I'll use that in the future for all the, the future jumpsuits that I make if I know that I'm using the same doll or my dolls are all similar in size. Um, that is the portion of the strap that will be exposed. So for the opposite side, I'm simply going to measure my strap right here at three and five eighths. I'm gonna mark that just across my strap. Come over here where I have my opening and I'm gonna push this right in. I'll feed that in there until I have that right where I want it. It's lined up with the princess seam. And then I'm just gonna pin that in place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run my top stitching along this whole entire bodice. So from the back, it's gonna cover this strap, go under the arm, come around to the front of the sweetheart neckline, and then continue around to the other side. And that catches the straps in both sides, but then they're tucked nicely and neatly inside the lining fabric. And here's that completed top stitching. So you can see that comes along here and catches the strap comes nicely along the sweetheart neckline as well. So then for the final step, all you're gonna need to do is come along here with your hand sewing needle and just follow along this waistband seam line and just hand sew this down. And then you're done. And there you have your completed Liberty Jane culotte jumpsuit.